It's uh, truly a privilege for me to be standing here in, uh, with uh, Mr. Narsi David, uh, a true visionary in uh, uh, our Assyrian nation and uh, one of the individuals who was part of the Assyrian Aid Society um, way at the beginning when we started over 20 years ago. Thank you for joining me. Wilbert, thank you. I'm delighted to be with you. Uh, Mr. David, uh, in terms of the Assyrian Aid Society, what compelled you, someone who is so busy with your personal life, what compelled you to uh, be a part of the Assyrian Aid Society? Well, there are a couple things. First, my parents are uh, refugees from the First World War. My mother was born in Ada, which is in northwest Iran, in Urumia, and my father in uh, Marbishu, which is in southeast Turkey, up in the mountains. They met and married in Chicago as so many, many Assyrian immigrants. You know, Chicago is where the jobs were, so that's where everybody came. Right. And then ultimately they moved out to places like California where the sun was warm and they could grow their traditional crops and so forth. Well, in 1974, I managed to get back and find my mother's village, Ada. And I'll tell you to this day, it had such a profound effect on me to think that my mother grew up in basically a mud building. I mean, this is not a fancy mm -hmm. adobe block building. It was right. built out of mud. I saw those homes in Ada. Uh, the Tanuira that we used to hear about, I had no idea. It was just a hole in the ground. And they burned cow dung for the fuel. There was no wood. Whatever little bit of wood they had made the roof for this house that was built out of mud. And to think that my mother grew up in that, came to the United States, got a high school education, got married, produced three children, owned her own house, learned how to drive a car, had her own business. Mm -hmm. And I thought, what an amazing, exciting commentary this is on the human spirit. Right. Well, if I could help the remaining Assyrians with much of the same, then I felt that, wow, I, there wasn't a question of should I or shouldn't I or when or wherever. I just, I just jumped in. And so the organization had just been founded that previous year. And I joined and I remained the president for, <laughs> gosh, I don't know, 16 or 18 years That's or something. Right. But I've now become the chairman of the board. Asher Yosef is our president who is responsible for the day by day. And I'm trying to spend a little more time in Washington. I got to Washington twice last year. I expect to go three times this year mm -hmm. to do whatever we can to try and develop a little more support for the problems and the fighting that we have to do to protect our heritage and the old country. It's, um, I believe it's very important to have an individual such as you as part of the uh, Assyrian Aid Society. It adds enough clout to the organization, but also you are inspiring vision has really um, propelled the organization to a different level, which we have not seen in a lot of Assyrian organizations well, you're, previously. Well, you're very kind. I don't get all of that credit. The truth is that, to my knowledge, the Assyrian Aid Society is really the first and, to I think, still only organization that is raising money exclusively mm -hmm. to help the Assyrians in the way we're doing it. Uh, we are not a social club. We put on social events as a means to raise money Absolutely. for our mission. And Tony Khashaba, who has been doing all of these cultural things to help establish and more than establish to create new, mm -hmm. new directions and new uh, limits for Assyrian culture, for the arts, for uh, uh, poetry and music and literature and to be able to do this at the same time as raising money to help the Assyrians in Iraq and other places where they're in such great need, I think is really exciting in itself. So, um, do you think that the program, the Mesopotamian Night, we're in our fifth year this year, uh, what do you think gravitates the, all the individuals to come and be a part of this event? Not only the backstage individuals, the hundred, there's over a hundred people working on this event tonight, and, uh, but also, for the first time, it's a sold out event. What do you think causes these individuals to come and join this event? Well, I think you've just hit a lot of it right there. The, the reality is that this is the first time we've seen this kind of creativity of Assyrian culture in modern times. We've had artists and sculptors working as private individuals all over the world. But here is an entire community coming together, not connected with a religious organization, not connected with a political organization, 
only connected to helping the Assyrians preserve their identity, preserve their history, preserve their culture. And I think it's exciting to see it finally happening. Absolutely. To me, what's been amazing is we've approached several individuals, and whenever we asked for help, there was no hesitation. They not only helped to the limit that we thought they could help, but they also exceeded our expectations. And that's been truly inspiring. And we even, I interviewed one of the individuals, and she said, every time I was down, and I felt like this is more work than I signed up for, I remembered the cause. And it truly caused her to continue doing the additional work. And I think that's the inspirational spirit that has carried on Mesopotamia. Right. And, and keep in mind another thing, it's not just those that were born in this country in my generation as a result of the exodus to Raqqa mm -hmm. from the First World War. There was the Persian Revolution in the late 70s mm -hmm. that brought a lot of Assyrians here. Their children have been born here right. and are now of an age to be contributing. And the early arrivals from uh, the problems in Kuwait and Iraq, likewise, have been here long enough to have been born locally and raised locally. And they are making the same kinds of commitments that we made from my generation. But we now have several generations that are coming together, and I think it's making an important difference. Absolutely. And we're also now, for the first time, Assyrians have had people in traditional um, fields, doctors, uh, you know, lawyers, engineers, etc. Mainly for, engineers. Mainly right. engineers, yeah, especially in the valley. But uh, for the first time, we're seeing individuals who have different degrees in the arts, in um, architecture, all coming together to make this evening. And writers and Absolutely, artists. Yeah, yeah, it's wonderful. So um, did you ever imagine that Mesopotamian Night would reach this? When you first talked about it the first year, would it come to this? The, that first, it year, the first year, we never dreamt of it. Absolutely not. This has evolved into a very, very important sub-chapter of what we're doing and uh, and has made a major, major and important contribution. Absolutely. Mr. David, I appreciate the time that well, you spent with me. Thank delighted. you very much. Delighted. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks Absolutely. so much.